coming to paperback and e-readers, a steam horror in the Hamptons. The aspiring angel tries to escape a house of horrors in this all-new Esteem series adventure. Pre-order your copy of Esteem Horror in the Hamptons in digital format at Amazon.com, Google Play, draft a digital and other digital booksellers, or pick up your paperback copy on May 24th. Better get the cool slow, y'all, cause we're having us a barbecue. <laughs> Did anyone ask for a remake of The Crow? That's the question I've got to ask after watching that abomination of a trailer that remakes a film that nobody asked for. Now, the 1994 film, The Crow, is considered to be an icon for most of us Gen Xers and Millennials because this film basically winds up defining the 1990s and basically tells a story that resonates with folks all throughout that decade. Now, The Crow was the late Brandon Lee's signature role, and one of the great tragedies of The Crow was that this film basically was the one that showed how much potential Brandon Lee had as an actor who was looking to follow in his late father's footsteps and the sad part is, is that he sadly wound up passing away due to a stunt on that set of The Crow before we could see how great an actor he was. Now, in addition to the tragic death of Brandon Lee and this being his signature role, The Crow resonated with people from different walks of life because many folks in the goth subculture, this is considered to be one of the iconic staple films of the subculture, and this film basically resonated to the point where many guys in the goth scene and even some girls were putting on makeup to look like the late Brandon Lee's character of Eric Draven, and even in the world of pro wrestling, the late Scott Hall, who was Razor Ramon, in the WWF, when he went over to WCW, he had a conversation with Steve Borden, also known as Sting, and Steve Borden was, surfer gimmick was starting to get tired as they were entering into the era of the NWO in WCW, and Scott Hall talked to him after seeing The Crow and told him that this concept could be good, a good gimmick for him. And Steve Borden, as the NWO storyline went on, started to become not less of a surfer guy who was saying due to going to this becoming this dark and mysterious individual. And as he became this dark and mysterious individual who had white grease paint on his face and black lines in it, he became this mysterious character who went on to become an icon of pro wrestling throughout the 1990s. And this iconic look for Sting basically became his signature look as he, as he went on with the later part of his career, which ended just a, f a week ago. And that's the impact of the original 1994 Crow movie on people from Gen X, the goth scene, and pro wrestling, and the comic book world. And I'm scratching my head wondering why some executive went out here and thought green lighting a crow remake would be a good idea 30 years later that's the thing that has me shaking my head because 30 years ago the 1994 crow movie was absolutely perfect and we didn't need a remake of this film but some bean counter in Hollywood thought it would be a good idea to greenlight this movie because they see the superhero craze going on and because they see the superhero craze going on they thought it was a good idea to remake this movie as a cash grab because that's the only reason why we would have a remake of The Crow and this abomination of a trailer and when I look at this trailer, it just makes me shake my head because this trailer basically j is showing me try too hard if it were a film. Because this whole new remake of The Crow 
it just tries way too hard to try to top the original 1994 movie, a 1994 movie that is one that resonated with people from all walks of life because of its great story, its beautiful gothic visuals, and its incredibly great performance from Brandon Lee, who showed us the soul of Eric Draven, a man who just wants to go out here and get justice as related to his death and his the death of his girlfriend, and wants to go out here and get that justice. Unfortunately, as the creators of this abomination of a remake, they just miss that message of a man who is humanity and looking to get everything right as related to his life in this world before he leaves for the next one. They get everything absolutely wrong because instead of making The Crow a story of justice, they turn it into a story of vengeance. And sadly, because the people in Hollywood don't understand the, diff the fine line between justice and vengeance, they give us a film that really doesn't capture the heart and soul of Eric Draven's story. And what's even sadder is that because as they miss the mark for Eric Draven's story, what they do is go out here and overcompensate by trying to make Eric Draven into an edgelord, overcompensating by putting a whole bunch of tattoos on the body of their new Eric Draven, shortening his hair, and changing him into somebody who basically is the beta version of, an, of Eric Draven, not radiating any of the confidence and presence that Brandon Lee had. Because the guy that I saw on screen, he basically comes across as a soy beta version of Eric Draven, and instead of him radiating the presence of mysteri a mysterious presence of, of Brandon Lee, what he does is feel not like a crow, but feels more like a pigeon. And because he feels like a pigeon, he really doesn't come across as very powerful. And I believe the executives who were being counting understood this. And to cover up the lack of charisma, confidence, and presence that Brandon Lee had with this new actor, what they do is cover it all up with tattoos that distract us from the face of the of Eric Draven, the character, and cover it up and try to distract us with all of this overdone CGI, which ramps and escalates up the gore factor in this film far above what I've seen in many horror movies. I mean, when I look at this trailer, I'm seeing all of these guys getting shot and stabbed. I mean, that's not what The Crow was all about. The Crow wasn't about going out here and just trying to put over the top gore. No, it was a human story about a man trying to set things right in his life, trying to do what was right, and looking to go out here and get justice. That is what The Crow is all about. And sadly, that's not in this film, because this film is all about revenge, and it feels more like a horror movie than a superhero movie, which some people would call it. But because The Crow was a graphic novel, I would say it's like a fine art gra comic book movie because it just had more to it than just heroes saving the world. It was a story about people, and that's what resonated with people from all walks of life. I mean, James O'Barr's graphic novel resonated with people from all walks of life, and it had a great humanity about it, but this film, it, it feels more like the crow, they're trying to turn the crow into Jason or Freddy, and that's not who, J that's not who the crow is. I mean, th clearly, these guys did not really watch the source material, because all they were thinking about was box office, and as they thought about box office, they thought, oh, we'll get rid of the Ernie Hudson character and race swap his girlfriend. We'll get rid of the child who was a major part of the movie. And we'll get rid of all the elements that made The Crow a great film. That's what's, that's what's really sad about this. You spent twice as much money as the Brandon Lee film 
and you made half as much of a movie. I wouldn't even say half. I would say you've made even a tenth of what made The Crow great. And that's why I can see why many folks of all walks of life are getting upset. Because I've heard so many goths come out and say this, this film isn't The Crow. And I can agree with them because I don't see no gothic visuals. I don't see any of the dark, mysterious mood that was all throughout the original film. And I just see a film that basically is doing what I'm seeing in Hollywood. A lot of these Hollywood executives are just trying way too hard. And what they're hoping to do is think that if they try hard, they'll impress you. But that's something I've seen many nice guys do in all walks of their life. They try way too hard to impress you, but they don't impress you at all because they don't have confidence in themselves. And that's what I see on the, screen, on the screen of this Crow remake. It just reeks of insecurity. I don't see it radiating any sort of confidence at all as related to it being a film because when you have a film, you just believe in your story and you believe in it to the point where you can get people to care. And that's the biggest failure of this Crow remake. It fails to answer that question that most screenwriters like myself have to answer. And that question is, why should we care? Because I don't see a reason to care about this Crow remake. I don't see a reason to care about it at all. I mean, when I compare this film's visuals to the 1994 film, I don't see anything unique as related to the god dark and gothic visuals. I don't see anything that makes me care about Eric Draven's character, who basically comes across as cardboard in this story. And I don't see anything about his story that shows him as being somebody who wants to get his life in order and before he leaves this world. I don't see anything about him looking to get justice because these people are untouchable and he wants to be a supernatural way to get justice. No, all I see is a guy who's been told that he's a god when it was never about the crow being a god. No, he was looking to go and get justice before his soul left this world. So he was never about getting power. No, he was about going out here and taking away the power of those who thought that they were above the laws of man and God. And that is where the creators of this film basically mess it up as related to this film. I mean, they basically just fuck up this film and they fuck it up because they don't understand the source material, but this is par for the course for Hollywood as they look to pander to modern audiences. They think, oh, I've got to take things to the edgelord level. I've got to make things extreme. I've got to go out here and put a lot of graphic blood and gore, but the whole thing that's missing is the heart and soul of the story. And that's why this film is getting cooked and roasted. It's getting cooked and roasted because this is not the film that most people who connected with this film grew up with. I mean, as a Gen Xer, I grew up with The Crow. My cousin, who was a millennial, we grew up with The Crow. And this film was one of those films that basically connected with so many people. That's why this film has a cult following. And this film, The Crow, again, is, is, is one that connected people of different walks of life. I mean, you have folks from the goth scene, you have folks from the world of comics, science fiction, and fantasy, you have folks from pro wrestling, you have regular average everyday folks. We all came out to see The Crow. Now, the box office wasn't super big like it is today, but this film resonated with people to the point where many people watched this film on home video, they watched it on cable. I mean, this film is one of those films that it wasn't a blockbuster movie, but it had a connection with people from all walks of life. And that's why all those people from all walks of life are basically taking this piece of crap remake that we didn't ask for to the barbecue because I've seen goths getting mad about this movie. I've seen 
comic fans getting mad at this movie. I've seen sci-fi and fantasy fans getting mad at this movie. And I've seen average everyday Joes and Janes getting mad at this movie remake because we see it for what it is. It's basically Hollywood looking to go out here and grab that cash. And that's why this film is basically going to be one of the biggest bombs uh, at the box office because it's not about the heart and soul of the story. It's all about money. And because it's all about money, many people have no reason to watch this crow because this crow is one lame bird because this crow ain't a crow. It's more of a turkey. And this turkey is going to be one of the biggest bombs of the box office at 2024. Now, if you want to pick up some of my black goth fiction, you can find the books of the Spinsterella Trilogy on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. And you can find those three books, Spellbound, The Legendary Mad Matilla, and Spinsterella on Amazon in paperback and Kindle format, along with my other action-packed fantasy fiction that's darkly inclined, such as the Temptation of John Haynes and the John Haynes series and many of the other darkly inclined books that I do like the Isis Bride of Dracula, Night of the Vampires and my vampire novel Eternal Night. You can find all of that great dark fiction on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find it at other online booksellers like Smashworth, the iBookstore, Google Play, Barnes & Noble, draft to digital and also at some big box retailers like Walmart and Target. And if you want to see me make more videos taking most of these superhero films and comic adjacent films to the barbecue, you can send a donation to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Coming to paperback and e-readers, Isis, Dark Incubus. The goddess next door gets enthralled in a romantic entanglement with an evil incubus in this all-new Isis series adventure. Pre-order your copy of Isis Dark Incubus at Amazon.com and other online booksellers everywhere. Now available in paperback and Kindle, vampires stalk the darkness of the Eternal Night. Get your copy of Eternal Night in paperback and Kindle on Amazon.com. Now available in paperback. From the author of the critically acclaimed book, The Man Crisis, comes The Woman Crisis. Learn why so many women have become lost in their quest to have it all in The Woman Crisis. Get your copy of The Woman Crisis in paperback at Amazon.com and online booksellers today. Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media, www.niceradionetwork.com. Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.